Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. Make sure y'all subscribe. Hashtag CB99 Talks. I am back with my post fight thoughts So Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Thurman. I am going to be doing a longer show on this, a longer discussion on both fighters. Uh, I'm going to drop another video coming soon, probably in the next day or so. But um, just want to do my post fight thoughts on uh, on last night, man. Um, yeah, man, that's what happens when you talk too much shit, you know? You know, that's what, that's what really happens, you know, if you let the shit talk and get over it. If you let it get ahead of your training, if you let it get over your 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 real hunger for what you want and what you stand for, you know, this that's what's going to happen, man. Especially if you're going in there underestimating somebody like Manny Pacquiao, you know, you underestimate the legend, you know, you're kind of disrespecting him and just feeling like oh nothing else matters. I mean, like I said, you can always think you're better than somebody, but and be confident that you have the skill to beat somebody. But you got to respect what they did, you know, and you got to understand why they got where they were and how they got there. You know, somebody like Manny Pacquiao, okay, he's 40 years old. You know, he has some losses on his record, but he has many a damn wins on his record that matter. You know, looking at Keith Thurman's record, he doesn't have too many wins against guys you could really say, oh, man, that they match up to anybody on Pacquiao's record, you know? So that's where he kind of messed up. He didn't just go in here taking this fight seriously. And, you know, I felt like, after I made my discussion video, I went back and looked at some videos on Keith Thurman. Well, you know, I did my my podcast episode last week. And um, after I did it, I went back and saw Keith Thurman just talking about how um, uh, Manny Pacquiao, you know, just, just overall how he's not a very good boxer technically. And he was just saying, like, um, this fight was part of his get back year. You know what I mean? And um, he was saying this is that fight to brush the dust off to get back into the swinging things for 2020 which to me is disrespectful because how can you see Manny Pacquiao as a fight to brush the dust off you know Manny Pacquiao is a serious damn fight you know you're going in there with the legend I don't care how old he is you know that this isn't a tune-up and I think Keith Thurman was seeing this fight as a tune-up and that's what kind of messed up his head you know he uh, felt like I'm the older man I I'm, I'm the younger man here and I'm the fresher undefeated guy and um, Manny Pacquiao has a knockout back in 2012 that I can still gauge him on, you know, that's what a lot of people do. They kind of gauge Manny Pacquiao that Marquez loss and think that he's shot, but Manny Pacquiao still has so much more experience in one hand than Keith Thurman has, you know, throughout his whole career, you know, and now he, he, he really experienced that, you know, that's, this was a learning experience for him, man. Cause, um, you go back and look at the fight from the first round. I mean, right from the stare down, Manny Pacquiao wasn't the same guy that was at the weigh-in that was smiling and laughing at the face-to-face -face on Fox, you know, the press conferences. He wasn't that same guy. When you saw how he looked at Keith Thurman, he was looking straight into his eye the way he was playing. You know, now Keith Thurman had that worry look on his face, you know. So uh, going into the first half of the fight, man, Manny Pacquiao just put that experience on him, you know. Um, everything that Manny Pacquiao does technically wrong, quote-unquote technically wrong, you know, he was putting it on Keith Thurman and Keith Thurman could not expose it. You know, uh, first round, I felt like Keith Thurman was winning the first round. You know, he was staying the busier fighter with his jab and, you know, he was starting to kind of counter and back Manny up. But it was as soon as Manny uh, kind of let his, as soon as Manny let his hands go in that first that first round towards the end of it, Manny showed him what a legend can do. You know, he went to the body with a straight left hand. And that's what kind of got Keith's attention. And then he came back up with the straight right hand that put him right on his ass. And uh, I think they said Lennox Lewis thought it might have been a, a a foot, that, you know, that stepped on uh, Keith Thurman and made him trip. But no, that was a straight up punch that knocked him down because he did one of the biggest mistakes by going straight back. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not supposed to do that. And uh, Keith Thurman, he did something technically wrong right there because he was pressured. You know, he was pressured by that legend that he said he would be able to beat and expose, you know, and um, just first half of the fight, man, Manny was just able to deliver, you know, delivering with uh, straight combinations, very strong punching, uh, a very good right jab. And uh, that's what kind of, you know, baffled me in this fight. You know, Manny Pacquiao, his left hand wasn't as dominant. It was his straight right. It was a straight right jab that was really busting uh, Keith Thurman's nose up. And, you know, by the fourth and fifth round, you could really see that Keith Thurman was breathing heavy out the mouth. And uh, he was feeling the power because you could see it in his eyes like he wanted to get his shots off and do his work. But he was kind of fearful of that right hand and still trying to avoid the left, which 
I got to give Keith credit. You know, he was doing really well, you know, evading the left hand and taking Manny's left hand away. And um, at the same time, he was doing good at times to really get his straight right in. You know, he was um, doing something that, you know, Adrian Broner, he couldn't do. And several other fighters couldn't do was kind of time Manny a few times with the, the, the jab and the right. But his overall experience in the ring and IQ wasn't enough to to nullify Manny's output. You know, Manny's punch output kind of went down, I think, just off of his uh, his age, you know, towards the second half of the fight. That's where um, Keith Thurman kind of came on stronger because I think, you know, Father Time is going to kick in at some point, and I think Manny kind of slowed down in those rounds, and that's where that's where Keith Thurman was able to kind of put his punches together, back Manny up, and put the, put together some good uh, double body shots, and like I said, go back up top with the jab and right hand, and one of the best combinations against South Paul, he was using that right hand left hook a few times throughout the rounds, but um, his work ethic, those were just his spots though, because there were still spots where Manny would get hit by Keith, and then he would just come back with two, three shots and kind of make Keith Thurman shell up. And there's times whenever Keith would land a counter, Manny would come back with his right jab. And that one single right jab would really move Keith. And you can see how strong a punch of Keith, uh, Manny Pacquiao was, you know, because when that jab would hit or that left hand would hit around the side, you know, it would kind of go around his uh, guard. It would just knock him back, you know, it would knock Keith Thurman back or knock him to the side. And um, I think he really under us to, underestimated the strength of uh, Manny Pacquiao. You know, he said he's not a very strong fighter or good inside fighter, but Manny was able to control the inside, even with body shots, man. Let's talk about the body shots, man. When Manny went to the body, that's where Keith really started to open up, and you saw what type of fighter Manny Pacquiao can be. You know, when he went straight to the body and stabbed him with that body shot, and he keeled over, it was like Luis Colazzo times five all over again man because right there when he he dipped over and then he came back up and he went on like the bike he took his mouthpiece out and if you go back and listen to his post fight interview it was the body shot that hurt him you know the body shot made him take his mouthpiece out to get more air and that's how serious it was like if Manny would have been able to close in and maybe land two or three more it probably would have put him down and out and um overall like I said just that work rate of Manny in this fight it was better than his work rate in the Adrian Broner fight um, it was much more aggressive than the uh, Brandon Rios or the Chris Algieri win. And um, I, I, I do I, I do have to give Keith Thurman a lot of credit, though, as far as his uh, his IQ and his his able to survive in the rain, because it, it was a, what he was able to do was still able to help him fend Pacquiao off from, you know, getting totally dominated and knocked out. Because um, if you look at the fight, I would say it was about eight rounds to four. If somebody says seven rounds to five for Manny Pacquiao, I could see that because there were times in like the second half where Manny kind of took his foot off the gas and neglected the jab and the jab was helping him win the fight. You know, the jab was really what broke, uh, looked like it almost broke and split the lip of Keith Thurman, you know, on the inside of his lip. He said he needs stitches now and like the, the nose, it was just leaking, you know, so I felt like Manny had that jab going in the first half, but if he would have landed that jab consistently in the second half and started mixing in the left hand he probably could have stopped Keith I think he could have stopped him but like I said it could have been father time or he probably could have felt like um taking uh taking it a little easy on uh Keith at times because there were times he was toying with Keith like when Keith would land a couple shots he would like you know hit his head like it didn't hurt him he was kind of having fun in there which you know can be dangerous and I felt like Manny should have tried to close the show and uh try to avoid you know the uh corrupt judges you know because when they read that that first scorecard for Keith I was already like wow you know I already felt like you know that Manny was about to get robbed and you know Manny he won the split decision and like I said for me it was unanimous and the punch that say Keith Thurman outlanded Manny which is which might be true but to me it all comes down to the quality of punches you know uh, Keith Thurman his number of punches could have been landing you know spread out through those rounds you know he could have landed you know stayed busy or maybe in one round busier than Keith where busier than Manny and it could have gave him more more punches of course but you got to look at the quality of punches you know the better punches were landed by Pacquiao you know he he dropped him he he busted the lip you know he had him leaking out the nose the body shots um just moving him with single shots you know moving him around the ring 
you know, making him back up from shots. You got to look at the quality of those shots. And I feel like the 107 punches Manny landed was better than the 100 and um, maybe 140 or 50 that Keith landed because Keith could have landed those the majority of those shots and maybe one or two of those exchanges where Manny, his was distributed throughout the 12 rounds and distributed well on Keith's body and his face. So, yeah, man, uh, overall, I just got to say, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be back with another little podcast episode discussing, you know, just some more angles of the fight and uh, just what I think of Keith and what he should do from here. But, yeah, as, as far as the fight goes, I felt like it was a good return for Manny, uh, better performance than the Adrian Broner fight. And um, I feel like, yeah, Manny still has Manny still has enough in this game to give all these young cats work. You know, I think that the Errol Spence fight might be a little bit more dangerous than this fight. And I feel like the Bud fight might also be a little bit more dangerous just because I feel like um, Bud, he's a little bit more gifted. He's a little bit more calm and cool under pressure and he doesn't talk. And I also feel like Errol Spence, he's a lot bigger and stronger and he sits down on his punches a lot better than uh, Keith Thurman. And uh, something like, yeah, going back to that, you know, Keith Thurman said that he was going to sit down on his punches in this fight, which I think he did at times. But he seemed a little fearful after rounds four and five. And he wasn't really sitting down on his shots anymore. You know, like there were times when he landed his jab and straight right hand. Like, I feel like if he would have put more put more, you know, funk on it, he probably could have dropped Manny. But, you know, Manny, whenever he would smile or Manny would hit his head. He was letting him know that, yeah, you, you you don't hit that hard, you know, or I can take your punch. And he wasn't hitting him hard enough, even with counters he didn't see that could really rock Manny. You know, there was a few times Manny kind of went back on the fence because I think he would just uh, kind of regroup and, you know, try to stay away from the combinations. But he would come right back off the ropes and, you know, just land some good shots on Keith. But, yeah, um, overall, <clears throat> yeah, man, overall good fight. It kind of saved, you know, the overall card, you know, after having um, – John Molina pull out of his fight and, um, you know, just, uh, you know, premature stoppages on uh, one of the other fights in the, the card. I can't remember the guy's name, but, uh, you know, good fight with Ugas and um, Omar Figueroa, you know, good ass whooping by, uh, you know, good ass whooping delivered by Ugas, which I'll come back and talk about. But yeah, man, um, Keith Thurman, I'm glad that he, you know, he didn't, you know, run out of the rain crying or he didn't, um, you know, just kind of say, oh, no interviews. He, he did come out and do post-fight interviews. He was there, you know, him and his lumped up head and all, you know, he was there. And, you know, he admitted that Manny was uh, a good fighter. But going into the fight, I know you want to sell it, but don't don't go over the don't go over the line and disrespect a guy like Manny, especially somebody who's had 70 fights, you know, went, won some, lost some, draw some and and always been respectful. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, Manny's not a guy you can really hate, you know, you you really have to be, you know, a chump to really find something to try to hate about the guy, you know, especially if you digging deep on him. And I felt like Manny, even all the way, like I said, to the stare down um, at the, you know, at the way in, you know, he he's just a guy that comes to fight and do his job. And, you know, he does it well. But, uh, yeah, man, that's all I got on this one, guys. Like I said, I'll be back with a little episode talking more about this. But, uh, yeah, from here, man, you know, Keith Thurman better humble himself, man, because, uh, you know, this was a humbling experience for him. But yeah, man, make sure y'all subscribe. Hashtag CB99 Talks. I'm out. Peace.